Hey, what's up, everybody? Mark Price with DevClub.com. And today, we're going to talk about JSON. Not to be confused with JSON. Okay, JSON, J-S-O-N. And does anyone know what JSON stands for? None of it? Nobody? Come on, guys. It's not that hard. Just kidding. It stands for JavaScript Object Notation. We're not going to get into the history of it or anything like that, but we've talked about how we can send requests, HTTP requests, and we can send data over in the body of the request via JSON. And so let's take a look right now at some JSON. So there's a really cool free online API called Star Wars API that someone put online for us here. And you know, they say you can try it out here. Uh, anyway, this is JSON, okay? This is, a, it's a format in which you encapsulate data so it can be transferred across the wire. Uh, and another format that is commonly used is XML. Okay, let's just take, uh, here's XML, okay? A different way of formatting. So notice how there's still data in here, but it's formatted with little uh, brackets and headings and things like that. It looks kind of like HTML. Now, XML is not highly used anymore or as much as it used to be. It's still used in places, uh, but most people use JSON now, especially with uh, mobile app development uh, and some of these newer uh, web technologies as well too. So that's, that's XML, but we're talking about JSON. And JSON it has basically JavaScript object notation, so it's very similar to JavaScript itself, uh, JavaScript objects, and basically you've got keys and you've got values. So what we're seeing right here, this is a key of type name, and the value is of type string. So Luke Skywalker is of type string. Um, in this case here, height is a key name with a value of type, if you were gonna say a float or double, you're wrong, because there's an M in there, and M is a character. So this is also a string, which is interesting, huh? Uh, so it's in quotes here, it's a string, this is a string. These are the key names on the left, these are the values on the right. These are all strings so far. Um, here's a different one though. In this case, the key value is films, but the, or the key is films, but the value is an array. Okay, so this one's different, but this is an, an array of strings. Okay, here's another array, and another array, denoted of course by the left square bracket there. Uh, and those are all arrays. Um, I'm not seeing any numbers here. So let's go ahead and uh, click this one here. Okay, so this is interesting. So in this case here, they do have something that has the number eight in it. Now they're interpreting it as a string, but if I had taken off the quotes, it would have been a number, uh, an integer or a double or float, however, whatever you can want to convert it to. And so the, the notion behind JSON is that you've got keys and values, keys and values, and then you can access those values and you can go as deep as you want. You know, I could have um, an array that has another object inside of it, which has another object inside of it, and uh, it can go as deep as it needs to go. And so this is an example of JSON. And I'm just using their uh, example here on the website. There's other, there's other websites too, like Pokemon API that someone has on the internet here. They've got some examples as well too. Here's a perfect example of the number, right? This one's 69, no quotes around it, okay? This one's a Boolean, we didn't cover that. So the key is is default, the value is a Boolean, okay? Another number could be an integer, an integer. This is a string, this is a number. And here's something interesting. This is what I was gonna show you. So the key name is abilities, but the value is an array. And the very first element in the array is another object, okay? So this outside uh, curly brace here means this is the start of an object, okay? And so we have an array here, an array of objects. And this object has a Boolean and an integer, and then another object inside of it called ability. So the key is ability and the value is an object. And this is how you start storing data. Now, this may be hard to digest all at first, but once you look at enough examples and play around with it enough, all you need to know is that your key names, they have quotes around them. They're strings, okay? The curly brace means it's, it's an object and objects have keys and values. Values can be of integers, of strings, um, booleans, of arrays, and of course you can nest things. So this array, the first element in it is an object. We could have put a comment here, a comma here, and then added another object to have a second item in the array. So key and value, key and value, and you've got objects and then the native data types you work with, uh, whether it's on Android, on iOS, on, on web, 
Uh, you still work with things like floats and integers and numbers and booleans, and so it's keys and values that go across the HTTP requests. Okay, they go across the HTTP requests um, or through the HTTP requests, and then the client can parse that out. And usually the clients, like on Android or iOS, they have uh, a JSON parser that takes this data and actually converts it into things that you can grab out of it, the strings, the integers, the floats, things like that, and make it really easy for you to work with these things. And uh, of course, this is just their example website showing how it works. We could actually put this in a browser, like so. I can paste this in here, and what was it? Uh, slash Pokemon slash one. So I could say slash uh, Pokemon slash one, like this, okay? And it looks a little bit messy, right? Like you can see all the data here, but it's a little bit messy. So Google Chrome is real nice uh, and allows you to um, to even view the JSON, which I think is pretty cool. And if you remember from the other lesson, you know, I said we could deliver from the server HTML for a browser to render. Well, in this case, the server's sending us JSON and the browser is like, I don't know what to do with this. I mean, your clients would, your, your apps would know because you're writing the code for that, but your browser doesn't know what to do with it. So here's something really cool. Let's go ahead and get a plugin. I'm going to go onto the internet here, the interwebs. We're going to call this Google uh, extension, or excuse me, it's a Chrome extension. I'm just say JSON reader, maybe. Let's see what we let's see what we find here. JSON view, perfect, perfect, exactly what we need. So I'm going to add to Chrome. It's already added in this case here. Um, I don't think it works on the uh, incognito window, which I'm using. So let's go ahead. So now that you have that installed, okay, let's go ahead and copy this URL. I'm going to close out of this here, close out of this, and I'm going to just pull a non-incognito browser over here, paste this in. Oh, come on. There we go. This time it worked. Okay, so this is cool. Now we can actually view JSON directly in our browser. So when you're working on your apps, okay, whether it's web or mobile, and you want to work with JSON, rather than getting a bunch of nonsense like that, you can just put it into the browser. Um, you may have to add some keys or app IDs into it. And then you can actually look at it right here and you can click on them, close them up, which is really nice. So you can say, hmm, where's my abilities? And then you can drive, dive right into it. So uh, this is very good for you to look at, get a feel for how JSON works. Remember keys and values. In this case, it's not putting the quotes around it for us, okay? But as you can see, this is a string, this is a string, this is a number. This outer thing is an array here. This is an object because it has a curly brace. So key value, key value, key value, Boolean, another object here. Um, okay, we're starting to get a feel for the, the JavaScript object no, notation. And that's what you, when you're working with web requests and you package up a body in a request, it's gonna be in JSON format. And you're probably gonna have some type of library on the platform that converts your data, that converts your data that you're using in your app uh, into JSON. What I mean is, let's say your app is a, you're, you're building a lead capture form. You want their full name, their address, their phone number, et cetera, et cetera. Well, you're building the form, whether it's in JavaScript or Android or iOS, and then you grab the string out of it, and you've got a bunch of these, these data, right? You got a string, integer, full address, all that stuff. Well, then what you do is you'll convert that into a JavaScript object notation, or you'll convert all of that into a JavaScript object notation, and then it'll package it up, and then your HTTP request will grab that and send it across the wire. And then your server or the server will take that data that you just sent over and it will decompile it or parse it is what we call it. It'll parse that data and then allow the server to take those and put it in its own, you know, fields or database or whatever, which is really cool. And that's how we transfer data back and forth. And you've probably been using this or it's been happening on your device and you haven't even known it. It's been going on every single day for years probably. And now you know what's, what's happening on your device when you're downloading all that data and what's actually happening. It's not magic. And the reason why it's not magic is because, well, you're going to see for yourself as you start implementing it because you have to do the manual work to make it happen. So JavaScript object notation, really cool stuff. Um, and uh, so this is a really cool tool to use. Another really cool tool to use is, uh, I would say, Chrome Postman. There's a tool called Postman. And what Postman does is allows you to make test requests right from a tool here. So you don't have to go into your code and write all of this stuff. Let's say you just want to test against a server to make sure you've got the right requests and the right headers and everything. You can use Postman, which is free, and put those values in here and see the results without having to write any code. 
So before you get all crazy and you're like wondering, why isn't my code working? Is it my code? Is it my request? What's going on? You can first test it in here. And once you have working in here, then you know exactly how the URL is supposed to look, what you're supposed to pass in, and then you can write the code. And if it's not working at that point, you know that it's your code's fault and not the web request itself. So Postman, uh, get this app as well too. It's very useful to have. Uh, developers use it all the time. I use it frequently. And so that's it, JavaScript object notation. Um, you've got a sense for it. You can go to these websites like Pokey API or the Star Wars API, start playing around with things and uh, get a real feel for how to use it. And that's it for now. Mark Price at devslopes.com. Jason. Jason.